Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, on this episode, we have an awesome photographer by the name of Ryan Brenizer. He is a wedding photographer in New York City, as well as a photojournalist. In fact, he is uh, taking some awesome photos of celebrities and politicians, people like Muhammad Ali and Barack Obama on the campaign trail and John McCain with uh, Cardinal Egan, in fact, all three of those together. He also writes for the Adorama Learning Center, as well as doing workshops at Adorama. And he's got this awesome website at ryanbrenizer.com. We have him on the show specifically because I was getting a ton of email from people asking me to explain the Brenizer technique. I didn't even know what that was at first until I looked it up and I was very happy when I called Ryan and he said, hey, let's meet in Central Park and I'll just show you how to do this. And so without further ado, here is our chat in Central Park. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. We're here in awesome Central Park and you actually shoot a billion engagement photos right on the spot where we're standing, is that right? Uh, quite a few. I mean, with the, uh, the volume that I do, I do uh, anywhere between 55 and almost 70 weddings a year. Wow. Um, I pretty much do engagement shoots on any attractive street corner in Manhattan or Brooklyn. Anywhere. And do you work yeah. exclusively? Well, first, let's talk about the kind of photography that you do. You're a wedding photographer, primarily? I am. I, I'm almost 95% weddings these days. Uh, my background is journalism. Mm -hmm. um, I. This is something, this and the gray hair ages me more with every passing day, but I've, <laughs> well, I've covered uh, uh, three U.S. presidents, Muhammad Ali, the Pope, all sorts of, you know, photography has taken me to a lot of really interesting places, mm -hmm. and I've uh, met a lot of really interesting people, but uh, for, for more than five years, the bulk of my work and, and the bulk of my passion is weddings. So um, with the president and Muhammad Ali and all that, was that, were you a photojournalist to begin with? Yeah, yeah. I started out in newspapers. That's oh, okay. where I, I covered Clinton and, and Bush for, for newspapers. Uh, and now I, I still do corporate work, um, a lot of events, charities, things like that. And that's where I actually was the exclusive non-campaign photographer allowed near M McCain and Obama before the 2008 election. And, and it looks like that's they've already booked me for the next one. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> whoever, whoever it's going to be. Yeah. All right. Maybe I can tag along. I'd love yeah. to see that. Um, so how do you get from shooting presidents and athletes and legends, really, to uh, now you're shooting weddings in, yeah. and around Manhattan? Is that a decision that you're like for stress or for fun? Or how did that happen? Well, you know, it, I, I had the style that I loved and you know, I had been working on and I knew uh, that you know, I love people with emotion and telling stories really about everyday life. You know, I, I admire uh, you know, war photographers and so many different you know, people who go around the world, but some of the things that's been most fascinating to me is just stories about family, stories about people, stories about the stuff that happens every day and, and personal relationships. And like a lot of people who haven't seen the industry a lot, especially years ago, you know, I didn't have that great a, a really a, put much value on wedding photography. You mm -hmm. kind of picture the old guy, you know, just shooting at like <laughs> F-16, right. you know, and, and that, you know, turn and smile for the camera. Uh, but I ran across the, the Wedding Photojournalist Association website and it blew me away. I realized there was a market for people who want to tell stories as well as right. show people off. And uh, I, you know, I jumped in with both feet right from there and um, it's been yeah, more than 225 weddings later, I love it more than ever. Oh, wow, I couldn't do it. I'm, I've tried <laughs> shooting weddings, I just don't have the, uh, the uh, whatever it takes. It I don't takes have a it. very certain kind of personality. You kind <laughs> yeah. of have to love chaos, right? Yeah. Like making sense and of weddings. It. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You got you to gotta love hearing a lot of Lady Gaga music. Right. And, uh, and going I can, to receptions and right. all that kind of yeah. stuff. That's just not me. But I know a lot of people that, that excel at that. And the other thing that I think is great about your work is you, you tend to find and I sort of understand the, the, the photos that you take because you tend to find those little elements, the, the small details that really make a wedding stand out, right. um, you know, the little details. Well, um, that's another thing I think is very interesting. A lot of photographers that I've talked to in the past, they, uh, they're, they're brand new. I mean, two or three years old as mm -hmm. photographers and, yeah. and cutting their teeth now as wedding photographers. Um, but you've got some experience and the neat thing about that is you're, you're giving that experience to others through your workshops. Yes. So tell us about the workshops because there are uh, a lot of workshops out there and I think yours sort of stand out because of the experience that you have. So what, what, what do you have to offer? 
Yeah, so, um, I mean, basically, the main thing that I try and offer is the experience of somebody who's still out there shooting all the time. Again, I, uh, this year I've done almost 70 weddings, and again, these are not, you know, not cheap weddings. Um, so, I, you know, I'm out there, I'm working with clients, I'm seeing what's, what's still in the industry right now. Um, and so the trade-off is, of course, I can't do too many workshops because right. uh, I'm shooting, but it, it really takes that experience. And then the other thing is that I have absolutely no secrets about what I do, you know, from anything from the business to the photography, be, uh, because I believe that if your business is based on secrets, then you're vulnerable to somebody just coming along and find out that secret. But if your business is based on just working really hard at being a better photographer, being a better business person, and being better for your clients, you know, th that's something that you can share whatever you want, and, and you know, if you're still going to have a great business. That is right. awesome, and I love that. So I totally buy into the whole open source photography teaching methodology because Absolutely. I'm never going to be you and you're never going to be me. So it doesn't matter how much I tell you about what I do, right. you still have a different vision and style and practice and discipline than I do, which is the joy of photography, I think. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that uh, uh, you have sort of perfected is something that is called the Brenizer Technique. Yes. And I didn't know much about this until I just got a barrage of emails asking uh, for me to explain it. And I'm like, I don't know how to do it, but I know the guy that does. And so here we are in Central Park. Can you show me how you do this technique? Well, first explain what it is. Okay, basically it's uh, taking a, the, the simple idea of doing a, a large panorama, but instead of using, using it for uh, just a lot of megapixels or just to have a really wide frame, it's taking what you're, what's fundamentally happening when you're doing a panorama. You have the same lens, you have the same everything. What's changing is that you're overlapping your sensor. And if you've gone from a, a tiny point and shoot to a DSLR or from a DX to, a, to an FX, you know when you have a bigger sensor, it's a lot easier to get a really shallow depth of field. Yeah. So if you can make that sensor gigantic with the same lens, with a fast prime, um, then you can have as, almost as shallow depth of field as you want, Sh shooting with like an F, one 0.4 lens, basically. That's awesome. And yeah. I've seen you do this, and you do it really fast, which I is do. awesome. Yeah. I've tried it, and I <laughs> didn't have success. <laughs> I only did it once, but um, let's do that. So let's take, uh, let's do a really quick transition. I'll be the model, okay. and let's have you shoot me here in Central Park, and uh, then we'll show you guys exactly how you do this awesome technique. Great. Thanks so much. All right. Now I'm your model, so Excellent. let's tell everybody how to do this. Perfect. So the, the main thing in, in creating a compelling photo out of this is to even though it's kind of a new technique, is to, is to go back to some very old techniques, which is pre-visualization, right? Because none of your individual photos is gonna look like the photo that you wanna end up with. And it's like putting a puzzle piece together. It's maybe been a long time with DSLR since anyone has gone like this, right? <laughs> but you wanna know exactly where your corners are. Otherwise, you may just go off into some really interesting direction where like the foliage is, but when you crop it, you know, you, you got to have a good rectangle or a good square or something that you can actually crop and make it to a photo unless you're going for some kind of jaggedy edge uh, kind of composition. So here, you know, I've, I've, got, I've got you, I've got this foliage. It's going to look really great when, uh, when I shoot it with a really shallow depth of field. So my corner, and I'm finding my corners and I want to fill that in. I don't want to leave any holes. So I've got that in my mind. And now just for the lighting, I'm just going to have you uh, uh, bring your left shoulder forward just a yeah. little bit. I'm That's the world's great. worst model. Here I am. <laughs> no, oh, trust me, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I could tell some stories. Okay. Um, so, so just looking right here, I've got my corners. Now, I do this a lot with people. Of course, people are not the ideal subjects for a panorama. This is even better for still life. But with people, first I want to tell you just hold relatively still. You don't have to, uh, you know, it's not okay. like a long exposure where if you move a molecule, it's going to make a big difference. But I want to shoot the parts that move first. And I want to get maybe a few frames of your, of your face so I got a great expression okay. to work from for the, for, the, for the first frame. And then fill it out and be very methodical. So you'll see that I'm working through the rectangle that I've already got in my mind. But I'm going to start with your right. face. So looking right here, perfect. <laughs> well not, there we go. Mark the great it. thing about photography is that even nervous laughter just looks like laughter. There we go. And now nice. I've locked my exposure, I've locked my, my shutter speed, my aperture, everything, so that each frame that I take now is going to be exactly the same. Now I don't have my white balance locked because I'm shooting in RAW and it's not actually baked into the frame. 
but if you're shooting in JPEG, you want to bake in your white balance. And in any case, when you process these, you want to make sure that the white balance of every photo is the same also. So your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your white balance, and your focus, all the same from all shot to same. shot. All right, can I move? Absolutely. All right, so um, white balance, focus, exposure, everything all set and then you're going to throw these into Photoshop is that how you do this yeah uh, Photoshop is good for some random reason I find that CS3 actually works better than CS4 or CS5 okay um, but any program that does well with panoramas I use AutoPano Pro a lot because of course I, I do a lot of panoramas and you can batch them right so I right. maybe if I shoot 10 of these in a day I can go home I can put load them all in and then yeah, go get a cup of coffee or something and wait for it to finish. Get it all done. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining right. us here in thank Central Park. Thank you so much. You thank bet. you. Thanks. Well, there's my famous photo that Ryan took, and you can tell I'm not much of a model, but you get an idea of how to do this awesome technique. We want you to try it out and maybe post your results to the Adorama TV Flickr group. I have put right here underneath me the uh, link to that, so you can go and try that out yourself, and then post your results. We want to see what you have. And uh, I also want to mention that Ryan had so much to talk about because he has a lot of experience, not only with weddings, which he shoots, as he said, tons of those every year, but as a photojournalist. So if we can, hopefully in the future, we're going to have him back so we can talk about a lot of the other things that he does because he's just that cool. Well, thanks so much for joining us this, for this episode. Remember, you can see all of the past episodes of how they do that. Just zip over to the Adorama Learning Center. We've got them all posted there. Or just subscribe to our YouTube channel or subscribe in iTunes, and you won't miss a single episode of Adorama TV. Well, thanks again for joining us, and I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.